late. It's a shame when the prisons getting bigger than schools, and all you see is dead people when you look on the news. Oh, I wish you could take a walk in my shoes. I'd rather spit what's on my mind. I ain't got nothing to lose. My advice is don't spit nothing if it ain't true. See me, I don't say nothing if it ain't true. The people rapping, telling stories, and they lying to you. To see, to see New Orleans be where it is with its music, and you guys may not see this as much as most people do, but the world, London, Europe, Germany, they drew about what comes out of this city. And we bought him and thousand never paid for nothing. My mama used to walk through the house and pray every day. And my grandma used to try to get us taken away. And my dad was never there, but I ain't care anyway. Cause the only time we saw him was on holiday. They weren't even playing a song except for, for the old school station. After all the interviews and all the people went crazy because of his independent album, he came in like number six overall na nationwide, uh, number one on iTunes, uh, and just, I think it was number three on something else. But the Houston market was the number one selling market for two weeks without radio play, without all that out of the whole country. So it's like, it's stuff you can do, trust me. They giving up the, the majors, the major artists, they giving them a hard time too, like T.I. He, he was here about the flexing, right? It didn't perform good. So he did, he said, well, okay, it didn't perform good. So he went back to the drawing board. He just put out a, 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 a fucking your city, some mixtape yesterday. Cause he said the majors. Fucking up your city. Yeah, fucking up your city mixtape yesterday to drop it. Cause he said, if they not feeling me, I'm gonna go put it out back. To, I'm gonna go back to the underground for baby famous. So don't don't think that just cause they high or they're, they're on a major, they going through the same struggles you going through. Matter of fact, it's more important not to get an independent cause we can make you can make sure make more money being an independent. You just have to go believe in yourself and believe in everything you do. What? Yeah. Okay. And you have to these days because that's what's happening. But at the same time, you know, if, you, if you're doing MP3 Blast, you got to create your own little category. You know what I'm saying? Go out, collect email addresses, build your group list from market to market to market, blast them out, request feedback. Don't rely on that. Blast them out. The ones you get, take them to heart. And always remember this, for marketing and promotion, all artists, you put something out there, if you don't fuck with it, we don't fuck with it. And once again, it's very important, market yourself, promote yourself, hand on hand. Get a, a relationship with everybody that you deal with, please do that. 601-862-9037, come holler at me. I'm the official record breaker of my state. Call it. 50% of that shit now is digital, and 50% of it is, is, is regular, like people will buy a CD. But, 80% of the consumers for that digital are people between the age of 25 and 13. 25 and 13 has always been an age category that dictates what's hot. Now, it doesn't mean you can't have a fucking big record and somebody 30 can dictate it. But today it's hard. Today it's hard because if you go to QUE or if you go to K104 in Dallas or if you go to K97 in Memphis or PAR 106 in LA, they want to know your website presence. They want to know what's happening with you on the internet. Everybody wants that. And Wayne may want to play your record, guys, but he's got eight or nine programmers who talk every week. And they question why you playing that record, man. Like the little brother who did the 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 the, the, the red cup thing. That man, I, I like that. Wayne, you were on point when you said it's a good thing for college. You guys have got to find what lanes do you focus your music on to break it up. If um, I mean, it just happened to me. I remember we had um. Bone Thugs and Harmony. Bone Thugs Crossroad album. We had done first of the month. We had done um, first of the month sold 2.5 million units. The next record that Bone wanted to put out was uh, East 1999. 
And I said, I had no fucking record to myself. I didn't say it to them. Because they had done a million, two and a half million units. Um, so I said, wow, they did two and a half million units. Who the fuck am I? I gotta allow them to at least call the shot on the next single. But I didn't agree with it. We did the next single. The next single was East 1999 and Buddha Lovers was the flip side of it. I don't know how many of you guys remember the box. The box wasn't gonna play that because the box had started losing subscribers, so they were getting hell from their corporate people. Box is gone now. But they were catching hell, so they said, wow, man, we love that bone record, Buddha Lovers. It was a better song than East 1999. They said, but if we play a record right now that glorifies smoking marijuana, we're already losing subscribers, we'll have problems with our corporate office. So they couldn't play it. They, they couldn't play it. The East 1999 record, we were selling 125,000 units a week. When we did Buddha Lovers in East 1999, the fucking sales fell to 4,000 units a week, guys. I said, fuck. So I wanted to put another record out. Couldn't put the record out, because my group, without consulting and talking to me, agreed to give Atlantic a song for the fucking Set It Off soundtrack. They got $250,000 to do that. I said, we know $250,000, I ain't mad with them, but fuck. They hurt the album. We could, they could probably make another couple of million dollars on the album. So I had to wait. The record was Crossroads. I heard Crossroads, but it wasn't the Crossroads you guys heard on the radio. Heard, I said, man, this record is great, but it got too many niggas and motherfuckers in it. So I said, guys, I figured they're gonna they're gonna wanna they're gonna they're gonna wanna go third water, ninth water on me, right? So I'm thinking, no, I got I gotta tell them it's cause I can't do it. I said, I'm ready to spend a million dollars on this record, but you gotta remix the record. To my surprise, they went back, they remixed Crossroads to come back with the crossroads you guys all heard on the radio. In the crossroads video, it took us almost eight weeks to get that video finalized and finalize the edit on that video. Uh, something that I, that, that was, and it wasn't an expensive video for us, but there was nobody telling me anything because I ran the company so I didn't have to answer anybody, unlike when I was at, at MCA. But I'm saying this for a reason for you guys because if you guys have certain talents, certain creativity, certain connections, it's, it's so important whether you collaborate with another record company or you collaborate with a film production company or the lady who came up who spoke and said that she, doing, she does film. You guys got to work with each other because if you're able to help one another to accelerate, the, the rest is history.